Is everyone still with me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah? Yeah? Okay, cool. Very good. Uh, so we're moving on into the second point uh, of the v- realizing value in the de- development process. Uh, so here is the selling the dream in advance. And I love marketing. I studied marketing, so it's probably uh, where my passion comes from. Um, and I think that many developers, even on a smaller scale, you have a fl- one flat, you have a couple of units, miss the fact that you can start advertising it before you finish the refurb. Uh, and when I had my, uh, my projects, uh, I always did CGI's for it because, first of all, I wanted to show the builder how it should look like, and I was very excited to show it to my investors. Uh, and second of all, I could put it on Rightmove, Zoopla, and all the other platforms earlier and start getting interest before it was even finished. So this doesn't have to be just for large projects. Um, we do them in-house. They are not cheap. They're uh, about n- a grant each now. Uh, but um, you can do them cheaper if you go somewhere else. I like the quality of it looking natural, like the real thing. Um, but uh, you would miss uh, an opportunity to get some uh, value out if you are not doing this. And if you think about it, so if you have a project um, and you have a bridging loan of 3, 5K, you know, which is quite normal, they're much, much higher typically, um, and you spend a couple of uh, of grants to do the CGI's, let's say, £2,000. I know Claire, for example, did it. So her CGI's were, uh, were here in a, a minute ago. And that saves you, let's say, 10, 10K, 15K, 20K in your financing at the end because you sold one month earlier. Then that is just a huge way of cost savings. But you need to be clever. You need to think about you know, allocating the financing costs that you would otherwise have into thinking in advance and into your marketing. So this is an example of my own projects. Um, the top two pictures are actually CGI's that went on Zoopla and Rightmove uh, and were used um, you know, to market the property. And the bottom two is the finished product and with the show home. And what I really wanted is to get the exactly the same things, but the sofa from the CGI failed to fit in, into the door. So sadly, it looks a little bit different, but, uh, but you, you get the feeling that you can actually create the product that you are looking to achieve. And where this is very helpful is for a group like, like here, where you grow in your investor uh, relations. This is really easy to, to show your investors that you've actually uh, achieved the product that you were pro- promising to achieve. Um, so yeah, always use CGI's to... Um, to, uh, to sell your product. So invest in a photorealistic product. I don't believe in, buy, in getting something that looks like a computer, actually computer generated <coughs> image. I believe that you should always find uh, the best people who can create it to look natural. Um, produce at least four because everybody loves browsing and what is my bathroom like, what's my kitchen like, most important places. Um, consider cost versus reward. So if you have 15K of bridging loan and you can save one month, you know, spending two, two grand on it is not, um, it's not unreal, unreasonable. Uh, and then also consider it marketing cost because you need to have some marketing costs if you have a development project. Right, so moving into the concept and interior design. Um, so c- actually creating this really stunning environment that people come through the door and think, wow, this is really amazing, and it stands out from a competitor next door. Uh, This is actually some designs for communal areas that we did only last week uh, for a new client of of ours, uh, Broadwing Homes. Uh, So we are just deciding which one we're going to choose. And the interesting thing about it is that you don't have to spend megabucks for it, because this is mostly paint and changing colors of the flooring. But it is much more interesting uh, than coming into something uh, very boring. And also hallways typically are are what gives the first impression of the property. Um, And they are uh, typically overlooked. Um, So looking at the concept of interior design, what we do is we work with the clients to really nail how the property will look like and and how it's going to hit the target audience. Um, so this is an example of um, 
of a bathroom for Mount Batten homes when we went back and forth of how the different options will look like, you know, with a big mirror, with a small mirror, with, with different tiles. Uh, and it was really fun process, but it does take uh, quite a long time. But then if you think you spent a month or two up front uh, and you don't worry for the next 12 months after you finish and, this, and the units aren't selling, I think it's better to worry and work for a month uh, than, than for 12 months afterwards. Um, so some takeaways on the concept. Uh, this is again concept for, for Claire. Um, so good design doesn't always uh, require additional capital outlay. You know, think about colors, think about interesting flooring, which might be, um, which might be lino or, or uh, you know, cheap carpets, but they could look really interesting. Um, let your product represent your brand. And that, that comes from my branding experience and the other brand, uh, branding company that I have, which, which what, when we work with the developers on, uh, on their developments, we try to think about how that links into their brand and into kind of longer term vision. Um, so uh, so uh, to create a certain look, you know, Mount Button Homes look or uh, Broadwing Homes look so that they can continue and the clients always know the sort of product they're getting. Um, appeal to, the, to your audience, so if you are looking to uh, sell to first time buyers, you know, make it a little bit quirky, make it interesting. Um, if you have uh, an area where uh, it's likely to be families, uh, you know, do something that would appeal to them, to the kids maybe. So, th so be a little bit playful with your design. Oh, that's it then. Um, and moving on to specification, which is very similar. So once you've desi designed uh, the development, then you go into, I, would, I could call it the boring details. So where, where is the flooring going to come? Where, is the where are the kitchens going to come from? And this is an interesting one. It's actually uh, potentially where we added the most value um, because all of those different pieces add up to, to your cost. And if you don't control <coughs> cost on on those small pieces, you're going to be way out of your budget. Uh, and often um, what, what happens and what I see happening uh, with, with some of our clients is they get a quote from the, the, from the contractor. Uh, contractor do not provide enough detail for them to understand what sort of product they are getting. And in the end, there gets some development. Indeed, it is a finished product, but it might not be as good um, as what they need to sell it quickly. Um, so for me, if, if you're a developer, I think one of the most important points is that you know exactly what sort of product you are creating and who is going to appeal to, who is going to buy it. Um, so we, what we do in the specification uh, stage, and this takes us months and months and months to put together, uh, is we design all of the bathrooms, kitchens, um, you know, we do technical drawings. We produce this document, which is uh, there on in, a, in a corner, which is typically about 50 pages long on every single detail that goes into it, so, you know, including small things like handles, skirtings, etc., with costings, so that when the contractor gets it, there is, uh, there is no chance for any extras, uh, because contractors are famous for their extras uh, when it comes to development. So from small things such as you know tiles were different size than what they were expecting, there is definitely no uh, route, um, no space here to uh, renegotiate the contract because they knew exactly what they were quoting for before they uh, they came to start this development. And when you think about it, actually, you know, the, in the on the development of 10, 20 units, um, small costs really do add up and they can really easily eat into your margin. Um, so all those extras uh, are very risky strategy. Um, so this is paying a couple of grant for specification is, is definitely uh, money saved. And so prepare in advance, you know, uh, even on a small project, if someone is doing a conversion, um, make sure that you have all of these details of everything that's going inside, to, inside um, the, dev the, the project. Uh, just do a big list, everything that you can think about, because equally on a, on a small project, 
one unit, you will be hit with a lot of extras when the contractor has to wait. Waiting time, I wasn't sure what to put in. And, and if you do not actually have the answer, he will not wait. He will just charge you for, for it. They are, they are also running a business. So this way you are also getting the product that you want, you control the quality of, of what you're doing, and you control the brand impact to make sure that you know, the, your brand stays strong in the market. So we came to the last point of my presentation, which is staging and show homes. And we're actually known f a little bit for our show homes because that's how I started before we started adding up all, all other products. Uh, that's one of the show homes from last year from Grace, for Grace Charles property. Um, and uh, just like the examples that I gave at the beginning where you, know, you can add twen up to 20% over asking with a show home just because people uh, look at it completely different. You know, they perceive the value in the finishes, in the furniture, in the soft furnishings, and they kind of ignore everything that's happening around it. And I've seen so many times where we came in and we styled a property that was really, pu re really finished to a quite low standard. But then you bring in the nice sofas and nice furniture, you paint a wall, and it just completely changes the perception of, of, of the development of, of, of that unit. Um, so what I wanted to show you is uh, I did a small example on why bother uh, about, uh, with, the, with all the styling. Um, so I, start, I um, started with what typically happens when you finish a project. Uh, and I think it's uh, in most of the cases you are over budget and you don't have any more money to put the furniture in and you're thinking right so I need a sofa I need a bed I need like basic pieces to show everyone that the space is right you know that it will, will fit the sofa it will fit uh, uh, a bed etc well actually I think you if you're doing something like this you're doing an Ikea run picking up their, you know, typical pieces, quite cheap, you know, I know, I, I know the drill. Um, what you're actually doing is, in my opinion, damaging the value in, th in this project. Um, and if you imagine with the same pieces, someone next door might be having this property. So now if you come, if you think about coming into this living room and seeing and the emotions that it, uh, that it caused you, and then you come into pro property next door, which has this living room, which in principle has the same sofa, you know, like the major piece is the same, then uh, you're actually, you're gonna be way off. You're not gonna get that buyer because he's gonna buy the place <coughs> next door. Um, and what I wanted to show you is our secret actually is that it's all in the little accessories, the small furniture, the, um, you know, the, the, the kit that we have. And it's not in the large uh, uh, units that everybody thinks about. You know, it's not about which sofa you bought or which bed you bought. It's all this um, perception of coziness and perception of uh, quality that, that we create. So if you look at this one, it actually gives you exactly the same feeling with a different sofa. You know, every time you change the large piece of furniture, it doesn't actually change how people feel about coming into this space. Um, so even if you just do a, the cheap uh, clip and sofa from IKEA, it's still co you still, they still come in and they still feel the warmth of this space. Um, so if you're using your styling pa packages, make sure that you choose a company that does all of those different bits. You know, that um, it's, they do furniture, soft furnishing, mirrors and artworks, linen accessories that will give the feeling a real uh, the space, uh, the real feeling of a, of a home. So my takeaways in here is, you know, always create the home. Um, the expensive furniture will increase the value of your asset. You can sell it, you can keep it for yourself. Uh, you can move it, many of our developers uh, move it to storage, then use it for another development. What we always do is we have quite a colorful style, so um, there is always um, splashes of color everywhere with us, but within limits, you know, it still has to be neutral uh, for, for buyers to see themselves in that space, but it needs to have some, some cool items here and there. Um, and that's, it's all about balance when you create that space and also think about who it is that you're selling it to. 
Um, and on the show homes, you can rent them or buy them. So there are rental companies. We do rental as well. Uh, not that often, but if you, if you have a family home, for example, it will unlikely be purchased with furniture. If you're doing a, a, a one bed flat or a first time buyer, they might want the furniture as a part of a package, which is, which is quite good because you can uh, drop it in and you know, get your asking price or over asking uh, negotiated in a deal. But on the larger uh, projects, probably rent it. Um, I have a video which we might skip because it's just like shows the whole process uh, of uh, doing it from the beginning till the end. So uh, you can go on my YouTube channel and watch a bunch of videos. We're actually releasing th all throughout January. We're releasing tips for developers on like how to style, how to style big spaces went on last, last week, interviews with our clients. So instead of playing this here for you, um, I'll show you um, the link to that so, so you can look at it yourself. Um, so what we've covered in the presentation, we've covered five different places where we need to, uh, where we can realize a little bit money with planning. Who can mention one of them? Who remembers one? Staging, Staging show homes, very good. Another one? Layouts. Good layouts. <laughs> Another one? Specification. Specification. Yeah. Almost, almost there. So lay layouts, floor plan review, computer generation images and marketing, concept and interior design, create something interesting, specification, make sure you have all the details before you start, or you'll be charged extras, and at the end, the show homes. Create the dream with that amazing show home. That's it, and that's, if you, if you find me, uh, if you Google on YouTube, Karolina Adamczyk, Adamczyk, then it's gonna, the, the channel will pop in, and all of the videos are there. Thank you. It's not a question, really, but I was just going to say on our hospital development, and you don't know this yet, oh. but we're not even at first fit stage, and two of the apartments have been reserved, and we thought we were going to struggle to get 250, but they've both been reserved for just over 300. Oh, which amazing. 20% open. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very good. Nicholas, your words of wisdom. I, I've had a long day to be fair. <laughs> you can't be able to make some words of wisdom. Thank you. So I think, um, thank you very much. Oh, Carrie, thank excellent. you. Excellent. Um,